Welcome to Impact the World, a podcast from West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is where we discuss topics related to how we can all love God, love people, and impact the world. Here's your host, Tara Hayes. I'm your host, Tara Hayes, and it's been a few months, but I get the privilege again today to sit down with James, Pastor James Lynch. How are you this morning? I am doing fine, and I'm so glad to be here and love doing the podcast. Well, I love having you with me. It's always a very good conversation. But back in the late fall of uh, last year, we were talking about things that make West Park West Park. Yes. And we talked Mm -hmm. about covenant membership Mm -hmm what that looks like and why it's important. We talked about the role of elders and why they're important to our body. And I wanted to talk today about the deacons. And we, yes. we purposefully waited until the beginning of the year because as you may or may not know, for those that are listening, we elect our deacons and they serve from January through December. Yes. And so we thought that since it's January now, it'd be <laughs> a good time to talk about deacons and their role. And there's also some changes to... Um, the yes. way we're deaconing, I guess. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I thought this would be a great time to just have a conversation with Pastor James about deacons. Yes, yes. I'm excited to do that. Excited to talk about deacons. We've, we've been planning this for a while. Yes, we have. <laughs> so, so I'm glad we're here. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit. I think you want to explain a little bit about the role of deacons. Yes. And we did in the, in the um, episode about elders, we lightly touched on the difference between deacons and elders. Mm-hmm. Um, But talk to us a little bit about the role of deacons. Okay. Well, if you know me, you know, I like to start with the scripture. So Makes me happy. uh, So let's do that. Um, In Acts chapter 6, there's a passage that kind of helps us to, uh, although the men in that passage are not actually called deacons, it it seems to be the pattern that uh, where we got deacons from. So I'm just going to read a few verses in Acts 6, uh, beginning in verse 1. It says, Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve, that's the apostles, the twelve summoned uh, summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So the apostles discovered this problem. The church had a problem. And the problem really, uh, there's a lot, a lot of little things you could talk about with this problem. <laughs> there were some, uh, maybe some racial issues going on and mm. things like that. But what was happening was uh, the Jewish people understood that it was their responsibility to take care of the widows. And uh, widows, they understood they would take care of orphans. That was all throughout the Old Testament. And, uh, but what was happening was, Some of the widows in the church, this newly formed church, it was growing leaps and bounds, people coming to Christ left and right, and thousands and thousands Mm -hmm. of people in this church. Some of the widows were being neglected. They were being overlooked in this care that was where they were just not being fed, just not being provided for. Mm. And so when this came to the attention of the apostles, they realized, well, this is important. It's got to be taken care of, but we can't give up what we're doing. God has called us to preach the word, and so we've got to continue what we're doing. So we need someone who can take care of this. And so the church appointed seven, and uh, Stephen was one of those. Philip Mm -hmm. was one of those. We don't have to go through the whole list, but (laughs) these men were over this matter. Now, I've always been, I've always marveled at this situation because you think about how large this church was. Yeah. I mean, this was many times the size of West Park. And well, they so, had thousands added in a day. Did exactly. They not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, this was That's a mega, mega church. Yeah. They didn't have the technology, the you know, all the oh, things, yeah. and the conveniences that we have. And so to do this task, this was a monumental task. Yeah. I think these men were over it, just like the apostles said. But they did, they couldn't have done it all by no, themselves because there were seven. There were seven. 
<laughs> there were seven of these guys. But they're and pretty, we'll talk a little bit on how many we have. Yeah, exactly. And we don't have thousands and thousands. We don't have thousands and thousands. But but sometimes you know, uh, I had someone ask me a while back, "Do you need more deacons?" Like, <laughs> well, yes. we can always use more deacons. <laughs> you right? can always use more deacons. <laughs> they only had seven. I don't know how they did it. These guys were extremely well organized. Yeah, I don't know. And either. their wives must have been some amazing cooks. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, they they organized it. They oversaw it. Yeah. They made sure it happened. And 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 the problem was resolved. Um, but so that's kind of the picture of the what sometimes we call proto deacons. You know, they were they were not really deacons, but later in the New Testament we find out that there is an office in the church um, called deacon. Uh, so we have elders, we have deacons. Elders are more uh, involved in the teaching of the word. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest difference when you yeah. look at the qualifications. Uh, and so really elders are kind of following the pattern that the apostles had here. The, the elders are focused mo- more on the teaching, the discipling uh, of, of people. Uh, although, as we know with Stephen... Stephen preached. Yes. Uh, Philip was an evangelist. So, so there may be there's some crossover things that happen ba- based on how God gifts people. But as far as offices in the church, the the office of the deacon is to really take care of those physical type needs that arise within the body of Christ. Uh, first and foremost, to make sure that the most vulnerable among us in the body that their needs are, are met as, as much as we possibly can. Yeah. And so that's really the role, uh, biblical role of the deacon. Yeah. So, um, so how, do we, how do we do that in church? You know, most of us, if you've been in church for any length of time, you know we have deacons, and you're kind of like, what do the deacons do? Um, and in the average Baptist church, uh, that role may look different from one church to another. I know in m- many of the churches that I was involved in, it seemed like the deacons were elders also, yeah. but without being called elders. Uh, but here at West Park, what we do is we divide that responsibility up. So we have elders and we have deacons. So the deacons, uh, even among the deacons themselves, they are divided into teams. And so just maybe to talk about... Um, how our West Park Deacons work would yeah. be the next thing. Yeah, I know that, um, like I kind of talked about that earlier, that some of that is changing yes. this year. Yes. That there's been some rearranging of the teams. And yes. So why don't you tell us about that? Okay. So um, so we have, uh, we have had for many years um, four different teams um, of, the, of the Deacons. That's the benevolence team, the finance team, the mercy team, and the support team. And those have been, those have worked great. Yeah. Uh, and I'll talk about what each one of them do, does in just a minute. But this year we've added a fifth team, and that is the hospitality team. Now, they're the I, ones throwing parties. They're the, they're, yeah, <laughs> they're the party animals oh, of no. West Park. Now, no, but we'll talk about what they do. In just a minute. So those are the primary teams, functionally, of uh, of of the deacons. We actually have a a sixth team that that rises out of these other teams, and that's the deacon leadership team. Right. And so, what I'd like to do today is just kind of work our way through these teams so that people understand. Um, kind of how all this works, what those teams are, uh, and how they're organized, and then what are their responsibilities. Yeah, sounds great. So so first of all, um, over all of these teams, we have a chairman. So we have a, a deacon chairman, and that chairman, now he serves on one of the teams, so the chair is not his only responsibility. But the chairman's responsibility is to, is to lead the deacon ministry. Uh, one of the things that we did at West Park, and this has been kind of a work in progress for several years, really, is when we went to an elder-led model as a church, one of the things that the deacons had traditionally done, like many other Baptist churches, is they had done some of the things that would really move to, that would eventually move to the elders. Right. And so it took a little while to work through <laughs> that. 
and make some of those changes. Um, and so that's been something that's been in the works, you know, yeah. and, and happening in real time. But, but what happened traditionally was our lead pastor, uh, Pastor Sam, would come to the deacons' meetings, and he kind of uh, set the agenda for things in the deacons' meetings. He would kind of give them the marching orders. So what we've been doing is we've been giving the deacons more and more of the uh, uh, the, the steering wheel, really, <laughs> of the deacon ministry. Now, the elders do oversee that, yeah. but we want the deacon ministry, the de- we want the deacons to own, their, own that ministry. Right. And so part of that has been that deacon chair position. Uh, the deacon chair is, is really responsible for helping the deacon leadership team, leading that team, to set the agenda um, under the oversight of the elders, to set the agenda for what the deacons are doing. So right now that, that chairman is Matt Allen. Oh, okay. And then uh, in addition to that, we, we are working on having a vice chair. Oh, okay. And the model there, or the, what we're trying to do there, is so that that vice chair would be someone who would basically doesn't have to do a whole lot in the chair position unless the chairman is absent. Right. Uh, but he works with the chairman and then is hopefully kind of like preparing to eventually be the chairman. Because another thing that we like to do is we like to replace ourselves. <laughs> well, it's always wise to have a plan. Exactly. <laughs> because, you know, things happen yeah. and, you know, we can't always uh, continue to serve in the same capacity. Plus, we want to constantly develop right. others to be continuing to serve in the ministry. So that mindset is not just in the chair position, but that's throughout. Throughout the whole ministry. Yeah. The deacon ministry, and it really should be a, throughout all the ministry. Uh, yeah, it really, it really, it really should. should. It, so, with uh, the chair, are they the ones that are responsible to liaison between the deacons and the elders? Yes. Uh, so the so the elders have a liaison as well, <laughs> and you're speaking to him. Yes. <laughs> so the so I'm an elder, but um, but I am uh, am kind of the elder that is in in I don't. I don't like the word closest use it. communication. Closest communication. <laughs> I don't want to say in charge of necessarily because, but I am the liaison between the elders and and the the deacons. So I work very closely with the deacon chairman. Yes. And so that is something that we're developing more and more to make sure that the deacons are leading their own ministry, but uh, they're leading it with. Uh, a connection to in conjunction with in the conjunction elders, with yeah. the elders yes so uh, so that's that part of the structure um, so let's talk about the uh, the DLT and that's the deacon leadership team oh an acronym an acronym like yes yeah yeah we like to shorten things as much <laughs> as possible <laughs> the DLT the DLT so the DLT is the deacon leadership team which is consists of the chairman and the vice chair but it also then consists of the leader of each of the individual teams. Okay. So the leader of the benevolence team, who is Joe Borsma. Mm. Uh, the leader of the finance team, Jeff Scott. The leader of the support team, who is Mark Faust. Um, the leader of the hosp- uh, mercy team, who is, is Jim Trotter. And then our new team, the hospitality team, is led by Steve Castile. Okay. So... Um, so what happens is the DLT meets and works on and plans out the agenda for the deacon team meetings that take place on a monthly basis. And, uh, and then any kind of communication or new ideas or things that need to be brought to the attention of the deacons as a whole. And so they set that agenda together. So it's not just one guy Saying this uh, is what we're going to do. Right. I have a fantastic idea. <laughs> it's, a, it's a team concept. So yeah. team, team, team all the way through. That's great. So we love that. We love that concept. concept. Um, so what we, what we do is we actually set up our meetings throughout the year to include uh, deacon, uh, deacon team meetings, uh, that time slot, which is a Saturday morning, uh, it's 7 a.m. I was going to say, at the crack of dawn. <laughs> we always have you coffee. Can't, you can't be a deacon if you can't get out of bed early. <laughs> you got to get out of bed early. We need you. We need you. 
Um, but yeah, we meet at seven, uh, usually it's seven to nine. Uh, and, uh, but what we do is, uh, two, three times throughout the year, we set aside one of those Saturdays to just be the deacon leadership team. Yeah. And then they plan from it at those times. And so that's kind of the way it, it, it fleshes out, you know, in the working of it, you know. So, um, so let's talk about the teams, Okay. Um, the, the individual teams. So there's the benevolence team. And so, Tara, if I were to ask you, what do you think the benevolence team does, what would you say? Well, I have an unfair advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> because I kind of know what they do. But I would think that would they not be overseeing giving benevolently or yeah. giving helping people in need? Right. Right. So so their primary goal, the primary responsibility is to is to take care of uh, benevolent needs within the body. So, so that has to do with uh, people who are members of West Park or regular attenders of West Park who may uh, be in a situation where they have a financial need of some sort. Yeah, I was going to say this is obviously because they're the deacons, this is church body focused. Yes, yeah. This is not outward if someone in the community that doesn't ever attend West Park right. needs help. And we do have ministries for right. that. And, and yeah. that's that's really our um, uh, really falls under Knox Haven, Haven at yeah. this point. Yeah, so that's the outreach ministry. So the deacons and the, and this that really helps us to also further define what deacons do. Yes, because the deacons are to minister to the body. Yes, uh, and that's really the pattern that we see here in Acts six, mm -hmm. and what we see really in the uh, in the rest of Scripture when we talk about what the deacons or, or the roles of the deacons that are described in, in the pastoral epistles. Yeah. Um, so then, so the benevolence team does that. So what the benevol what will happen is if someone does have a need, uh, there's an, there's an email, uh, benevolence at West Park Baptist. And we'll put these, I'll put that in the yeah, show notes. That'd be great. As well. So if someone does have a need, we send that need at that point in, uh, we receive that need through that email and there's a process. Um, we don't just write checks um, <laughs> because we want to help people in the very best way possible. So there, there, uh, there's information gathered. There are discussions that take place. And so the, the goal of this ministry is not to just, you know, the old saying of uh, you can uh, give a man a fish and... Right, uh, feed him or, for a day. Right, or you can teach him to fish. Or you can teach him to fish. So there, there may be things that we can help with that are beyond just taking care of the immediate need, and that's kind of what the heart of the the men who serve on that mercy yeah. team, uh, on that excuse me, the benevolence team. And so then we have the finance team, and the finance team we just kind of lock them in a room and <laughs> <laughs> let them crunch numbers. <laughs> the finance team is in charge of dealing with the finances. Of West Park, um, they they manage the uh, deal with the um, the budget uh, yearly budget, and then monthly they go through and, and monitor that and make recommendations to the elders. The elders do have the fiduciary responsibility for West Park, uh, so that, but the team the um, the deacon team are the ones that deal with the. You know, and the ins and outs, the, the details, and they report to the elders. Um, and so there's a, there's a close connection there. And then we have the support team. Those, so the support team, uh, Mark Faust, led by Mark Faust. Jeff, Jeff Scott's the one that leads the benevolence team. Uh, the support team, their role changed this year a little bit. Uh, not a whole lot, but a little bit. So what the support team is responsible for is, is they're responsible for communion, which here at West Park, we, we every, month. every month we celebrate communion. And so the support team, they're going to be the ones that are, are making sure all the elements are prepared, all, all the elements are ready. And we, you know, the way we do it now, it's, it's not quite the same we used to do in the past. Say, they're not having to fill those teeny they tiny don't have cups to fill, of grape juice yeah, every month. Exactly. It's, <laughs> we get those pre-filled ones now. But to make sure we have the supplies, uh, and those have an expiration date. Yes, you know? they do. <laughs> so, you know, make sure things are rotated, the stock is rotated, that we yeah. keep up with all of that. 
and uh, and make sure also we have everything available for communion at home. And, and I was going to ask you if you were going to yeah, talk about we'll, that. Yeah, yeah. we're going to we're going to come back to that a little more in detail. But that in the past has been the responsibility of the support team to do communion at home for mm. for folks who are you may you may have used the term you know most of us are familiar with the term shut ins right. we don't necessarily use that term we call them members at home all right uh, and we'll talk about them in just a few minutes but uh, but they but the support team is not the o- they're not the only ones responsible for that anymore oh, it used okay. to used to all fall on yeah. them but we've divided that up a little differently so we'll get into that uh, but they are responsible for communion, and then they're also responsible for the support team for special projects. Oh. So what I mean by a special project is we've had many situations where maybe we have um, a member who's had surgery or had an injury, and now they're in a wheelchair, mm. uh, and they have no access into their home. Right. And our support team has actually put a team together where they would go build a ramp. Nice. Um, or maybe we've had a member who um, can't afford to fix their deck and they have boards that are breaking and it's dangerous. Yeah. Or, you know, and, and they've done projects like that. So these are special projects when a member of the body, again, it's the deacons ministering to the body, we have a member of the body who has something that um, they just can't take care of themselves for whatever reason and you Does know. some of that come through the benevolence? Do they find out about some yes. of those projects through the benevolence team? Exactly, they do. So the benevolence uh, team works hand in glove, really, with the support team. Okay. <clears throat> and so, and this is another opportunity to really go back to my point about those original seven deacons in that church in Jerusalem, that there is no possible way that these men did all this on I their know. own. Yeah. And so one of the things that we are constantly doing is with these deacons is that support team is not doing all the work. Yeah. Um, they're coordinating. They're, they're coordinating and participating and leading it. But we, now they may get other deacons from other teams to help, but they also will pull uh, people from the body church here. Church members. Church members. And, attenders. And, yeah. And so this is also a, a great opportunity to cultivate and develop future deacons. Right. And so that has been uh, a very deliberate, intentional way of, of looking for our deacon body to grow. Uh, and, uh, and so that is, is a very key component to all of this. Um, you know, we don't want to just have the same folks serving forever and and what's going to happen is eventually they're not going to be able right. to do some of these projects. Yeah. You know, so we may need some older men who who maybe aren't able to do the things, you know, drive those nails like they used to be able to <laughs> teach others to do the same thing. Right. And so that care it goes, goes back on to and that on. thinking ahead and replacing ourselves yes. in the future. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and giving younger uh, people an opportunity to serve. Yeah. You know, because we're we're all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, and and the way that practically works out is serving others. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity to do that. So that's the support team. Then we have the mercy team. Uh, the mercy team is led by Jim Trotter, mm-hmm. and uh, Jim does a marvelous job with them. This is his first year leading this team, and we know another fellow that used to lead the team that also did a marvelous mm-hmm. job. Yes. <laughs> But anyway, uh, the Mercy team, their responsibility is mainly uh, hospital visits, um, uh, long-term care, or or, or, uh, not long-term, not as much long-term care, although that can be it too. But uh, uh, if someone's in rehab, you know, in a facility, it might be a a long-term care facility, but they also have a rehab division. And so someone's in rehab or or, uh, in the hospital for a period of time. Uh, that's going to be the mercy team making those visits. And uh, so they, again, can take someone with them, you know, and disciple someone else along the way uh, in that, but they're leading that, leading the way. So that's what the mercy team is. It's a great team. Yeah, it really is. It really is a great team. And their role has also changed 
somewhat uh, because there was a, a piece of that that is now being distributed among all the deacons. So the, there have yeah. been some changes. Yeah. Uh, the biggest change, however, is adding the hospitality team. And that's our, our last uh, of the main teams. So uh, the hospitality team, their responsibility is really to show hospitality to those who are uh, coming to West Park. So that involves greeting uh, at the doors when folks come in. Nice. Uh, yeah, but, but it, once again, they're not doing it all. They're, I was going to say. Yes, yeah. they, there's no way they could. No, there's no way they could. But we and we have a tremendous uh, group of greeters. We really do. And we really yeah, do. greeters and ushers. So our greeters and ushers are led by the hospitality team. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So the hospitality team does the scheduling um, for who's going to be at what door at what event, whether it's a Sunday morning or maybe it's Christmas at West Park or some other event that's taking place. So it's the hospitality team that makes sure that someone is there to And greet. that's a lot of, no pun intended, a lot of moving parts. Yes. Because I think if you know anything about our campus, we have a lot of doors. <laughs> we have a lot of doors. <laughs> we have a lot of doors that have to be open. And it sounds funny, but, I mean, you still, you want the man or woman, to, and right. you know, exactly. so that people feel welcome when they yeah. come. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that is the responsibility. And this is a brand new thing. It's a lot of uh, moving parts, as <laughs> you said, Tara. It's a lot of moving parts. And so uh, it's it was a little, I think, overwhelming at first yeah. for them. But they're like, really oh. they're really stepping up and doing such a fantastic job. And so they lead the greeting greeters, but they also lead the ushers. So mm -hmm. the ushers who are helping folks get seated and, and yeah. all of that sort of thing, we make sure that somebody's somebody scheduled yeah. to do that at the various locations where they need to be scheduled. And so all these things are, um, are really what the individual teams do. So then you have the Deacon team as a whole. And, and what we've done is those, uh, those folks who, uh, we call members at home, we used to call it the home team and we had so many teams, it was a little <laughs> bit confusing. So we decided to call them members at home, and that's so, a good that's a good way to put that. Yeah, it, it's it it's it says what it is. So these yeah. are members of West Park who are no longer able, or maybe for a period of time, unable for health health reasons, uh, not able to attend physically at West Park, and we don't want to do we don't want the same thing to happen as what happened in Jerusalem with some of the widows being neglected. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to neglect our widows, widowers, our uh, couples who have health challenges. Um, we don't want them to feel like they're not part of West Park just because they're not able to get physically here on a regular basis. And so when someone is in a situation like that, and sometimes those, are, those situations are discovered through maybe the mercy team is visiting and uh, an illness it turns out to be an extended illness or it turns out to be an, a debilitating situation, um, then they're going to communicate back to, uh, back to us and we're going to evaluate that situation and see maybe we need to contact them and see if we can put them on the members at home. Mm. And so the deacons, uh, uh, are their responsibility as a whole, no matter what team they're on, they are assigned at least one, um, depending on how many we have, uh, they're assigned someone that is one of the members at home. Now, sometimes you might be assigned two because it's a husband and wife yeah. and they're in the same home. Yeah. You know, we have some situations like that uh, where there are multiple family members for various reasons that are on members at home and maybe two or three people are under that one deacon. Um, but what was happening was as, as West Park grows and ages, mm we had a growing population of people who were in the members at home and it was a lot for the mercy team yeah. alone. That's who was handling that before. It was a lot for them to handle. Yeah. Because each member had multiple yes. people and yeah. that could be very difficult. And so we ask our deacons to make contact with uh, their members at home at least once a month. And, and sometimes that's hard because, um, 
you know, someone's at home, uh, maybe they're not as internet savvy, yeah. you know, as, as uh, someone that's younger. And, uh, and, and maybe, you know, they get a lot of robo calls and they're, right and they're not going to answer they're that not going to answer call. the phone yeah. unless they know who it is yeah and so we we are also this year actively have made an effort to uh, to send out uh, notifications to those members at home in the mail the yeah. old, old-fashioned u.s post <laughs> office snail mail uh with a picture of that deacon oh that's really good um, their phone number their contact information so that as much as possible, we're able to put their mind at ease, knowing that if this number calls you, right? This is this is a friendly <laughs> person. Is this is not a sales call. This yeah. is someone wanting to reach out and and show you the love of Jesus and just be there and just encourage you. Yeah. And it may be anything from a phone call to a visit to uh, a card, you know. But it's those touches and connections and. And then if there's a need that arises, that is a point at which we can find out that maybe, hey, hey, we need to go build a ramp and support team needs to be brought in on this. Maybe there's a benevolent need that has come up. We need to get a hold of the benevolence team. You know, so these teams work together uh, to be able to uh, hopefully meet those needs of the body. Well, I know we have a great, great group of deacons. We always have. I mean. We're very blessed. Very blessed. And I'm excited. This year we have some young, some new young deacons. We do. We do. And we are so excited. And and many of those young deacons have been fruit of those efforts to reach out and get them involved in these projects, work together with them, uh, working alongside one another. And, yes, we have. Uh, the the youngest deacon now that we have ever ever had, had I know yeah in the history of West Park that's awesome and so we're very very excited I mean he grew up in this he church. grew up in this church and so it, it's neat to see because um, a couple of them that I'm thinking of that are younger have been involved in West Park for some time yes and so it's nice to see them move into these roles mm-hmm. and it kind of goes back to your whole podcast series about intergenerational it, church it does see all of this works, all together. Of this works together we really do have <laughs> thoughts and plans <laughs> there, there is purpose behind a lot of what we do that's right and if you if you listen to those podcasts oh. by the way if you have not listened to those podcasts on <laughs> intergenerational church let me please encourage let, you to do let that. me encourage you um i actually just went back and re-listened to them myself recently just to kind of refresh myself uh on those on those because they were so enjoyable. Those yeah. interviews were yeah, just they really fantastic. Were. They really were. Uh, and, and the people that participated were just so much help. But um, but yes, we one of the things that Matthew and I said over and over in those in those podcasts, we're not starting a new ministry entitled Intergenerational <laughs> Church. Sign up here. <laughs> no. But this is part of a culture right. that we want to cultivate with at West Park. So so yes. That is intentional in yeah. in the deacon ministry, and it's something that we want to make more and more intentional because it it is is biblical, right? And I think it is vital to the health of the ministry. It is, it um, is. Uh, we have thirty one deacons yeah. this year. And yeah, you all really messed with me when I made that brochure because. <laughs> <laughs> As the graphic designer, I was like, oh, we don't have an even number. We don't have an even number. How am I going to make rows and columns? It's <laughs> the least of my worries, that's, really. That's, that's, I just that's, wanted to give you grief about 31. 31. Not Sorry. 30, not 32. I know. We were trying to get trying <laughs> it's to get 32. It's all good. I well, think... we can blame the lack of one. Yes. Again, on someone special, <laughs> Matthew Hayes. Uh, um, but we, yeah, yeah, we, we no, love Matthew. Good. We won't do that. We won't. <laughs> we do love him. But he's not the only one. We could That's do right. That, so we could we could do some other. Call out some other people. No, but, I'm just kidding. So, but back to something you said earlier. Uh, we elect our deacons, and they serve from January to December. We elect them at our annual meeting, which is in November, mm-hmm. and um, so that means they serve for one year. Now, what happens is typically what we shoot for mm-hmm. is that they serve repeatedly yes so they can be renominated and 
we, we actively do that as much as we can, uh, renominate existing deacons to continue to serve. But we're always looking for to grow that ministry. Yeah. Because, um, you know, the population of the church is aging. Yeah. At the same time, we're bringing in young people, it's too. It's growing. It's yeah. growing. So, but, and we want to grow West Park at all age groups. Right. So when we've had people come here uh, as senior adults mm-hmm. and then end up on members that are, can end up, I can't think of a specific, I won't say it because I think there's a specific <laughs> example, but but can easily end up on members the members at home. Well, actually, I do. I do think of someone who, a couple who, who uh, would fit that bill. But but so, so as the church grows, the needs of ministry grow. Yeah. And so we want to see our deacon ministry grow and uh, and continue to uh, be a blessing at, of, of the church, and and it has been, and yeah. it's a blessing for me to be able to work with with these deacons. Well, I know they love working with you, and I mean, there's no question that um, the deacons are a vital, vital part of West yes. Park yeah. and the ministries that happen um, through the body. Yeah. at West Park. But, you know, I kind of alluded to a brochure. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know more about the deacons or know who our current deacons are, there is always a brochure that is available yes. in the Welcome Center, like at one of the connection desks, Welcome Center, front lobby, or in the hub. And one of the goals of the communication team this year is to actually, I think we're going to get them online Great. on our website so that people will be aware of just of who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and we encourage you all, if you pick up a brochure, use that to pray for the deacons. Absolutely. Because they, they are, you know, they are a volunteer team Mm -hmm. and they're, um, giving their time and energy to, to minister throughout the body and could really use your prayers. Yeah. And if, if you think through everything we just described about what they do and realize they are a volunteer team. Yeah. Um, you know, you have individual members, but then you have these leaders too, and they have even more responsibility yeah. to keep up with their teams, to track certain uh, things, and it, it's it's a lot to do yeah. on a volunteer basis, um, and, and we're just so thankful yeah. that they're willing to do that. But, but, you know, what happens is when anytime you, you know, step out to serve the Lord, there's always something that pops up the enemy just always throws some roadblocks in the way and some distractions in the way and and so do please pray uh for your deacons and uh and pray for their leadership pray for wisdom uh pray for the time pray for their families yeah because you know when a man steps out to be a deacon he's taking time away from his family he's taking time away from his wife and uh so it takes a lot of grace to be a deacon's <laughs> wife uh, and uh, a deacon's child. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so pray for them. They yeah. really, really need that prayer support. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation. I've uh, enjoyed it. About deacons and, and um, the part that they play to make us West Park. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think anything else? No, I think that's all I have. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I, I I do. I enjoy so much every time we get to sit down. If somebody, I, I know one thing, um, is there one particular email address if somebody had a question about the deacons? Is there a deacon email? I, I can't remember. I don't think there is. I think I, Benevolence is the only team ben- that has a direct email. Yes, I believe that's true. Okay. Um, so, but if they did have a question, they could email me. Okay. I can get that question either answered by myself or I can direct Direct it it. to somebody who knows (laughs) more than I do, which is a lot of people. Oh, (laughs) not true. (laughs) Well, I appreciate your time and sitting down today, and um, I look forward to the next time we sit down. Yes, I got ideas. (laughs) Thanks for listening today, and we pray that this has been um, informational for you, but also encouraging to you. Yes, yes. Thanks again. Thank you for listening to Impact the World. To find out more about West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, visit westparkbaptist.org.